Hey everyone, it's Thomas here. So today I'm going to talk about the Prima Luna Prolock 1. I am so sorry, it's not going to be a review and I will explain to you why somewhere in the middle of the video. You got to keep the suspense. However, you're probably wondering at this point, so Thomas, why am I looking at a video of you talking about something that is discontinued? We're probably at Prolock 5 right now. And like all my videos, I'll give you something to think about. And there's something that I learned from the Prologue one that I think will be true also for the rest of the Prima Luna series. So for those of you who don't know about Prima Luna, check out the channel Upscale Audio. Um, I think the guy name is Kevin. Uh, he made a few nice videos about Prima Luna and that's where I learned about Prima Luna. And one of the selling points of Prima Luna is that they use point-to-point -point soldering as opposed to circuit boards. So if you look inside a Prima Luna, you'll see that there's a lot of wires point-to-point -point soldering. If you look inside, let's say a Yakin, that's another integrated amp that I own too. You see that there's a lot of green circuit board. Now, for those of you who don't know what an integrated amp is, it's basically a preamp and an amp combined into one unit. So all you need is the DAC, either a CD-ROM or a turntable with a phono stage. Now, if you look at the front of the um, unit, you see that there are 12 ax 7 a There's two of them. There's two 12AU7 tubes, and that's for the preamp section. At the back, you have the EL34 for the power section. You get about 35 watts per channel. Mm, I wish it's a bit more, but that's how it is with integrated amps. If you look at most integrated amps out there, you're not going to get more than 100 watts, and even then. So the point of getting one of these integrated amp is, of course, to try tubes. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about tubes and you know, wondering what the big fuzz is. So why don't I buy a Yakin, which costs way significantly less on Amazon, and I would, why would I want to buy a Prima Luna? It's something that I was very curious. So when my friend got the Prima Luna, uh, I was like, oh man, he's going to call me, he's going to tell me, it's going to be fantastic. Now, this is, who, this is my vintage friend. I call him vintage friend because he owns a lot of vintage gear has a lot of experience, he has owned a lot of high-end gear in the past, but now he's only playing with vintage entry-level gear. And uh, what he tries to do is to achieve really amazing sound with cheap gear. And he does an amazing job. So he knows tubes really well. In fact, a lot of my content on my YouTube channel comes from him because, you know, he simply has a lot more experience and he's very good at listening. So when he called me and he told me that the Prima Luna was meh, I was like, what? Hello, what's wrong with you? He said, I wish that there was a bit more stability in the power section. And I say, well, what are you comparing to? Well, to a solid state amp. I said, well, you can't really compare that to a solid state amp. But he said that, you know, even my Yakin feels more stable. So after a while, he put it away and I didn't think about it. So recently, he told me that he's going to sell it. I said, look, you know, before you sell it, let me try it. I want to check out what's the big fuzz. It's about Prima Luna. So I dropped it. Uh, so I picked it up, actually. And now uh, once I tried it on my Bukhar S400 at the time, I was blown away. I was like, what the hell? First 10 seconds I can tell already. I said, this sounds fantastic, amazing. I don't know what my friend is think thinking about. Like, why do you say that this is meh? It was so good that I didn't want to touch the system in the sense that I didn't want to change anything. Leave it the way it is, listen to it for a while. Because it's hard to get a system with good synergy and it had good synergy. Bass was, could be better. Yeah, it's 35 watts after all. Now for those of you who say, well, I'm gonna, with my system 30 watts, I can shake the foundation of my house. Bass is a bit more complicated than that. It's not just slam, boom, boom, boom. For me, bass needs control, it needs to go deep, it needs to go fast, it has to have power, and a lot of things to make good bass. From my experience with all the integrated amps, tube amps I tried, bass is always meh, 35 watts. Even at 200 watts, when my friend's 26, my friend's VT200 with 26 tubes, Base compared to solid state, it's still, there's still a gap. So I didn't care though. 35 watts, it makes bass, okay enough bass. It sounded great. So then I spoke to my friend, why the hell do you say it's meh? It sounds fantastic. Turns out, and this is the part where I say it's not a review, it's 
it's because before he gave it to me, he changed the tubes on it. He put these lazy boy tubes made from even before I was born. And on eBay, they cost, I think, 300 or 500 US. I'm like, you know, the tubes are like one quarter or more than, you know, of the price of the integrated amp. So I say, then obviously nobody's going to put these kind of tubes in it. Yeah, but you said, you know what, when I bought them at a the time, it was like 70 bucks. You know, it's just that eBay these days bid up the price like crazy with new old stock. So somewhere out there, you probably can find tubes that will make it sound phenomenal. If, you know, if you find the right tubes for it. So I asked him to sell it to me and he refused because ever since he changed the tubes, he thought that, yeah, it sounds pretty good. So the question of how does it sound, I'm going to tie that up with how does it compare to, um, to the Yakin Integrated Amp. You see, in my I made a video called uh, Why Tubes, Why Use Tubes, right? And in the video, I mentioned about holographic image. These Prima Luna are very good at that. It creates that holographic image that's why I was so attracted to it. You might go, well, okay, so what's so different about it? You see, tubes for me are separated into old sound and new sound. Okay, if you Google it, it doesn't exist. It's just something that me and my friends use when we talk, right? Hey, so uh, about this new stuff, uh, how does it sound? Yeah, it's the new sound. What's the difference? The new sound, they're more detailed, more revealing. They're fast, they're tight and they sound more like solid state than tubes. In the old times, because my friend plays with a lot of vintage gear, it's not about creating that holographic image. It's all about the color of the sound, the warmth of the sound. I like the Moran sound. I like the Macintosh sound. It's, yeah, it's about color, musicality. Now it's all about being analytical, being detailed and so forth. So that's why when people tell me, you know, Thomas, I tried tubes. I don't hear that holographicness. Even, even though I did mention in the video, not all tube equipments are holographic. It's because you're using something that has that old type of sound. You look at the newer equipment, the shit Freya, the Prima Luna like this in this case, and the even the Audio Research LS28, and that's a $10,000 tube preamp, they have that same characteristic. They lean more towards solid state than the older tube sound. And I find that interesting because if you look at DACs also, the higher end DACs, they lean towards analog sounding, like, like turntables, more than digital, right? So high end turntable is the same. It is trying to achieve that digital cleanness, not digital, but that clean and clarity that that I think that's why I say perfection probably is somewhere in the middle. Turntable, DAX, you know, one is trying to be like the other. And this is the same thing. Two, in, two trying to be like solid state. And then you have solid state equipment that say people advertise, oh, they sound like tubes, right? Tubes, tr uh, solid state trying to be like tube. Because perfection for me is somewhere in the middle. So that's why when you listen to these newer integrated amp, there's that flavor there, solid state flavor, very clean, very quiet, relatively speaking, compared to the older stuff. So that's something to think about. And I was so impressed with this Prima Luna that I wanted to try the higher end stuff because if they can get that so good with the entry level stuff, I can only imagine that how, how, how amazing their, new, their, their high end stuff are. Um, maybe one day, you know, because they're, they're, they're pretty expensive Prima Luna gear, but uh, I, I definitely would like to give them a try. So in short, Prima Luna, you have that full body sound, you have, uh, it's tight, it's fast, lots of clarity, which is not necessarily a good thing, because depending on the speaker you pair it with, because I say, you know, these days, all these new gear, man, everybody's going through that, trying to be a detail as possible, as sharp as possible, as bright as possible. Sometimes matching gear is difficult because of that. I'm not saying the Prima Luna is bright. I'm saying it's uh, leaning towards being 
a bit too detailed for compared to let's say the older gear which is a good thing actually see the older Yakin is color sounding so if you are somebody who don't like color you want it to be neutral then the Prima Luna is a better buy because it's easier to fine-tune the Prima Luna given the fact that it is pretty neutral maybe a little bit leaning towards the uh, well bright is not the right word a, a loss of clarity so you know you can fine-tune it with tubes uh, with uh, a DAC with <coughs> cables it's much easier than working with uh, the Yakin when it's color and you try to fine-tune it to sound neutral it's a bit more difficult so um, I myself prefer the, the newer sound than the older sound but people like my I guess my wife she she liked the Yakin sound it's much warmer it's more musical uh, so it once again it depends on your taste and you know it's just my experience so I mean if you look at the, st at the statistics I mean the specs on a Yakin and a Prima Luna it's not going to tell you anything what I just told you right that, that holographicness holographicness as the way I defined it is when you close your eyes you can imagine yourself walking around the singer and the instruments are all separate nicely right lots of air and uh, if you have never experienced it um, that's because you haven't come across a tube preamp or equipment that does it really well solid state can definitely do it in fact my main reference uh, preamp right now is solid state and it does it really well uh, these also you know they're very good at creating that depth uh, compared to let's say the older uh, tube Yakin integrated amp type of sound so that's where the difference is Yakin with sound uh, I would say a bit more chubby relatively speaking Prima Luna lean and tight so in short if you want to relax then you get something like a Yakin more musical if you want to listen critically then you get something like a Prima Luna so I, I fall more in that category uh, another thing is that the Yakin you have to manually bias it my friend likes that because the way he, fi he, he think is that you can overdrive the tubes so it's like giving turbo charge to your tubes the Prima Luna um, it does it by itself so you can't do much uh, with it he did mention though with the Yakin you can give it very very good tubes it doesn't scale as well meaning that there's a limit of it, it hits the limit really fast on how much improvement you can give it by upgrading the tubes with the Prima Luna the improvement is way higher and uh, when my friend tries tube rolling I mean it's not like trying one or two tubes I mean it's like let's get the box out and let's go tube rolling all right guys so I'm gonna end the video right now of course you know this thing about old sound new sound something that me and my friends come up with you google it nobody's gonna write something like that right well I don't know maybe they do so this is really just my experience uh, if you know if you have the same experience as I do please leave in the comment uh, for those of you who have been only playing with vintage gear and you're curious what all these new gear is all about go check it out and for those of you who have only been playing with uh, new equipment and if you find that your equipment sometimes can be a bit too clinical too sterile too cold maybe you can also look at the vintage stuff um, there's no better in my opinion they, they cater to a different group of people my wife as I mentioned um, she prefers the older type of sound when I first brought the Yakin home she liked it over the Yamaha AS-801 that I had at the time you know it's warmer and she, 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 she liked that that full body sound that chubby sound that yeah that warm sound and uh, it is good to try both so that you have an idea so that's why I'm very glad that I got to try the Prima Luna and also able to compare it side by side to the Yakin I remember I recorded a sound demo I'll see if I can find it somewhere and uh, I'll put it up so that you can hear the difference between the two integrated amps uh, alright so till next time